Hey, what's up? This is Alchemist.Camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. And today we're actually not going to build anything. We're just going to solve a really simple problem. And that is, how do you encode your ectoschemas as JSON? So let's take a look at it. Here is my schema for users inside my account that's called campsite, and the context is accounts. So we can get a user with user equals campsite dot accounts dot get underscore user bang number one which is me and you can see this user has preloaded a credential into it and there's some uh some other things uh this is not preloaded it's for uh, gross surf contacts and then i have a name inserted at the normal stuff all right, let's see what happens if we just try to encode this. And this does look like a fairly standard sort of struct that should be encodable. The user piped into poison or poisson, however you uh, pronounce that, encode. And we get error, invalid, nil, users. That's a little bit odd. So let's look at what happens if we just take user.credential because this is simpler, it's not preloading anything, and there should be nothing to choke on. Here we get error, invalid, nil credentials. This is from the meta tag, or the meta field inside the schema. Ecto uses this, uh, and it's not something that uh, Poison knows how to encode. So, one thing we could do is we could just remove that using map.drop, and remember map.drop takes a list, so we pass it a list containing just meta, like so. And now we have a struct that doesn't have a meta in it. Pass that to poison.encode. And the association was not loaded. So now we have a problem because a user association wasn't loaded. All right, what happens if we drop meta and user? That works. Okay, so we have a couple of issues here. We've got to have all the associations that can be preloaded, preloaded, and we've also got to get rid of that meta field. So we could do something like this anytime we wanted to encode something. But of course, in the case of a user, we would actually have to strip out the user's meta field and then also strip out anything that's not preloaded, and then also strip out the meta fields from whatever was preloaded, such as credentials. And that's a little bit silly. So here's what we can do. We can use derive, and we'll just say how this, this uh, schema should be encoded. So right above the schema, we'll pass a, a derive, and we could actually use defimpl if, uh, if we want to do something special, but in this case, we'll just use derive poison dot encoder only and we'll specify the fields to take we're just going to take email password actually password hash and stripe id and we do have to restart the server after doing this but after up oh, shoot this is the user i gotta do that in credentials so we'll derive these in credentials uh, notice that i'm not deriving the user and in general like you've got to come up with some way to do this um, in in my case the users can all preload a credential and the credentials can also preload a user but i can't um, have them go back and forth preloading forever in uh, at least in a, a schema that I'm, I'm trying to encode. So what I do is if it has a belongs to, I do not include that in the encoder. But if it's a has one or a has many, I do include it in the encoder. So let me save this and we'll go back to the user. And here we want name, username, and credential. Now, normally, I probably would include the gross surf contacts, except I don't preload those in the user. Since they're not preloaded, 
it would cause a problem for the poison encoder anyway, so I won't encode them. However, if I did have something like, say, uh, a post which had many comments, and then I, I were going to encode that post, I might actually load up all those many comments and, uh, and encode them. All right, so now anytime we try to encode the user, it should only get the name, the username, and the credential. And then inside the credential, we should only get the email, the password hash, and the Stripe ID. Let's restart the server and give it a shot. Encode. And there we go, we can encode the user, and within that we've encoded the credential. But if we wanted to just grab the, the credential separately, we could do so. So that's how you encode a schema. If you found this useful, by all means, sign up at alchemist.camp, or if you're one of those YouTube-only sorts, click the bell and subscribe so you get future episodes. Until next time, code on.